What's good, YouTube? You already know who it is, man. It's your boy Q, aka The Wave Man, 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 man. Here with WaveMonopoly.com to bring you guys another tutorial. Hey, stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. Look, skin says brang dang dang. Welcome back everybody to a Wave Monopoly tutorial where today we're gonna show you how to master your music super easy with five simple steps. Mm. Yes, five simple steps guys. These steps are super easy. I'm gonna just break them down like this, man. The first thing that we're gonna learn how to do is get our saturation, okay guys? Um, harmonic saturation helps with perceived loudness, okay guys? So there's a difference between perceived loudness and actual loudness when it comes to um, limiters and you know luffs and stuff like that. But we're gonna keep it super easy, guys. The saturation, harmonic saturation is gonna help us get our perceived loudness, okay? The second thing that we're gonna do is compress, all right? We're gonna master compress, bus compress um, our record, all right? And what that's gonna do is help us kind of smash the record not, not smash the record, but we want to get the record, um, you know, a little bit more contained so that we're able to push more in the uh, limiting stage our record to maximum loudness, okay? Um, the third thing we're going to do is EQ our record so that it has more life and more brightness, which also helps with perceived loudness, all right? Fourth thing we're going to do is add some width to the record. And of course, the fifth thing that we're going to do, guys, is... Add a limiter to that thing, make that thing go to the super loudness that we want it to be at, the loudness we want it to be at, so that it can compete with these records that you guys listen to on a daily. Let's get into it. So the first thing that we're gonna do right now, guys, is add our harmonic saturation. The reason we're gonna wanna add our harmonic saturation, like I told you guys in the preview, is to add to our perceived loudness, okay, guys? Like I said. So what we're gonna do, guys, I'm gonna show you the plugin that we used here. Looking at the screen, you'll see I used the Crammer tape, all right, guys? Now. This is one of my favorite plugins to use while mastering because simply this adds a couple different things to the record while I like to use it, okay? Now, when we're working in the box, guys, things can get really digital really fast. And when I say digital, I mean like it could get tinny, things can get almost too perfect. You know what I mean? So what I like to do is kind of go into the record, guys, especially in the mastering end of things and kind of dirty it up, all right? Add some body to it, add some, some grunge to it in a way, all right, guys? So... I love to use the Kramer tape, um, and like I said, guys, this is to add our harmonic saturation. So what I'm going to show you what we did right here, guys, is we added the Kramer tape, and I like to use a preset to start off with is in the mastering, and it's called Mastering Clean Open. Okay, guys, now, what you're going to see right now, guys, is a whole bunch of different things right here, guys, but what this pretty much does is it adds kind of like a, a, a tape saturation to it, okay, guys? What we're gonna do right now, guys, is we're gonna bypass this, unbypass this so that it's active, and what we're gonna do right now, guys, is we have a noise right here. Now, nine times out of 10, if you listen really closely, you could probably even hear the noise right now. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is slide this down so we can get rid of that noise, okay? That's the one thing I don't want right now, okay? And times, that can be a really good thing, um, probably during mixing stages if we want to add some noise to some pianos to add some character. But in this case right now, guys, I do not want noise, all right? So we're going to turn this down right now. You probably literally heard the noise just go away, all right? So let's go ahead and play this with and without so you guys can hear what this is actually doing. Um, you'll probably be able to hear it a lot better once we get to the final stages and I run back through this. But yeah, what I kind of want you guys to listen for is how it kind of rounds out the whole song as a whole, okay? It kind of makes the bottom end, the bass, and the drums kind of more warmer and more, more, more body to it. And what it kind of does, it just adds just the warmth to the whole record. All right, guys? So let's listen to it. <laughs> All right, guys, if you could hear that, it kind of, like I told you guys before, it kind of adds more weight to the actual song, which I, I love when I'm mastering tracks. I like to make my, my masters and my, my mixes and my, my songs in general just sound heavy. All right, guys, so that's, that's what kind of what we want to achieve right there, okay? The next thing I'm going to show you guys is what we're going to do right now is we're going to actually compress, okay? This is bus compression, okay? This is the famous SSL bus compressor, okay, guys? So what we're actually trying to achieve when we're using this bus compressor is actually kind of to, it's going to add some more weight, okay? That's naturally what it does, and it's going to kind of glue this track together, okay, guys? And, and basically what we're going to want to do is kind of squash this just a little bit so that we're able to kind of push the full volume 
um, at the end to get more loudness. Okay, guys. So what we're gonna do right now is bypass this. Okay, guys. And just to make this a whole lot easier, guys, what you could do to achieve this is go to load, and we're gonna want to go to mastering. And this is going to be a beautiful preset to get you guys started off with, okay, guys? Now, there's going to be a couple things I'm going to show you how to kind of gauge this meter and understand what's going on, okay, guys? So, while we listen to this track, guys, I want you guys to look at this meter right here, okay, guys? This is going to be, of course, how much dBs this is kind of going to be taking away from the peak. And what you're going to really want to listen to is the kicks, okay? When that kick is starting to hit, you're going to see this meter start to boom, 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 boom. Okay, guys? Now, what we're going to really want to do is not allow this to go anywhere. Definitely not past four, guys. Once you get past there, you're, you're, you're taking too many dynamics out, all right? You're starting to lose a lot of dynamics once you get past there. So what we want to do is kind of aim for anywhere from two to three, I would say, okay? So that would be somewhere around here in the middle, okay, guys? So we're going to be playing around with this threshold, and that's what we're going to do, guys, to keep it super simple for you guys. That's what we're going to do, okay? We're going to play with the threshold so that we get a little bit of that glue while not taking away too many dynamics, all right? So, let's get into it. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Do you want to sound like young boy? Every time I come around, you ain't no shit, You know we are blurky when we swerving in those three years. Ah, Post Malone. Try to find some light in my life, so I stand the moon. Maybe future. Bryson. Making loves to end discussion. You are not bluffing. Think about coffee. You got a night, your man, but you drop Scott. Like who am I? Your suicide. Don't you hop inside? If you want professional sounding vocals, then recording through one of our Wave Monopoly presets, that's exactly what you'll get. We have many different presets from many different DAWs, including Pro Tools, FL Studios, Logic, Ableton, and Studio One. And no worries, if you don't have Waves plugins, we offer both Waves and stock preset plugins. So head over to WaveMonopoly.com and pick the perfect preset for you. We're gonna play with the threshold so that we get a little bit of that glue while not taking away too many dynamics, all right? So let's get into it. <laughs> All right, guys, that's where we're going to leave that right there, guys, because as you can see, we're kind of getting around 2 dBs um, and, and 2 and 3 dBs reduction. All right, guys, we don't want to take too much out, guys. We just push the threshold up just a little bit so that we're able to achieve that, guys. All right, guys, now that we got this, guys, and like I said, I don't know if I said this before, but just make sure that you're at the loudest part of your records when you're mastering because you're going to want to use that in order to really catch those peaks properly so that your record does not become distorted if you were, like, say, for instance, um, mastering a verse the whole time, but then the chorus gets super big and then it starts to hit too much distortion and starts to start clipping, all right? Next, we're going to be EQing, okay? So the EQ that I like to use, guys, is the Puke Tech from Waves, okay, guys? Now... The reason I like to use this is because this is actually an analog style um, EQ. And what that does is it adds some certain some harmonics um, that you probably wouldn't get in a parametric EQ. And this kind of just adds to just some musicality uh, of the record. Okay, guys? And this is an emulation of the, the Poltec EQ, which is a super classic EQ, guys. And for it to be modeled uh, digitally is a blessing to all of us. So let's get right into it, okay, guys? Now, as you can see, to break it down, basically, guys, it's basically boosting and attenuating, okay? Boosting and attenuating different frequencies, okay? So this is the low frequencies. We got 20, we got 30, 60 hertz, 100 hertz. That's the lower frequencies, okay, guys? So when this can really affect the bass, the kick, things like that. And we have higher frequencies right here, okay, guys? Starting at 3K, 4K, 5K, 8K, 10K, 12K, and 16K, okay? Um, hertz. So... That's pretty much that, guys. And then we have our attenuation. This is the frequency that we're attenuating as well, okay, guys? So, like you can see right here, guys, what we went ahead and did was we did a kind of a boost and an attenuation. And this is kind of a technique that is kind of really unique to the Poltec style EQs, is what basically happens is when you go ahead and boost any frequencies, and in our case, we're boosting the 60K range to kind of bring some more punch and some more weight to the lower end to bring that back up. Um, so when we're boosting, we're again going to attenuate. And what this allows, this, this technique allows us to do is it creates some pretty unique curves that are 
very unique to the pull tech, which makes the pull tech itself. All right, guys. So what we went ahead and did was we basically boosted some of the low end. Okay, guys. We boosted it by one dB and then we attenuated 0.8 dB. Okay, guys. And what that adds is weight. Okay. And then what we went ahead and did was at 12K, we boosted almost 4 dB, so 3.8 dB and attenuated at 2 dB. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and play this with and without so you guys can hear what this is doing. Okay. Let's go ahead and do this now. <laughs> So guys, if you could hear that, I know you heard that. What that did was added so much more life to this record, okay guys? Not only did it add life, but I was taught that when you're working with these um, EQs and these mastering EQs and EQing just a lot of things in general, um, the record almost sounds faster, like it speeds up. And that's because literally it's breathing life into the record, okay, guys? So let's listen to that again and just listen to how much body it brings in and how much life it adds to the high end, which also adds to our perceived loudness, as well as you can kind of hear how it almost sounds like it speeds up when I went ahead and added that pull tech in, okay? Let's listen to it right now. <laughs> So guys, as you can see what we're doing right here, guys, we're adding a lot of body. We want to bring a lot of body in there so that we have a big sound of record and we want it to breathe life, all right? We want it to be an energetic track. Okay, guys, so that's what we did with the EQ. Now, next thing we're going to do right now, guys, is I'm going to bring in the S1 imager, and this is pretty much just a stereo imager, guys. So what we're using this for is basically adding some width to the record just to continue to make that record big and kind of give it some more stereo feel, guys, so it's not just mono coming straight through the track so that when you're hearing it, it sounds loud, sounds wide, and big. All right, guys? Now, it's very easy in the mastering stage to go overboard with this, okay? So like I say, less is more, less is more, Charmin Ultra. You know the rest. All right. So what we went ahead and did, guys, with this was simply added some width to it, okay? We added 1.2 right here, as you can see. This will probably start around 1. And we didn't want to add too much, guys, because you want to get most of your width and your stereo fields during the mix. And you could achieve that with, with many different things. Panning, um, you know, reverbs, delays, you know, all types of different things. Um, but we went ahead and just added this to the end to just kind of add that last touch of why, uh, that last touch of width. Okay, guys, so we went ahead and added 1.2. And guys, like I said, do not go overboard with this, okay? Don't. Don't do it, trust. Let's go ahead and listen to what this did for the record. All right, guys, like I said, less is more, guys. It adds just a little bit of width, but like I said, guys, that little bit of width goes a long way, especially when you're listening to the little instruments, the hi-hats, the snares. You'll hear it kind of widen out, all right, guys? And the last thing that we're going to want to do now to bring this record to full mastered level, guys, is bring the volume up, okay? Without clipping, without distorting, well... We'll get into that. So what we're going to do, guys, we're going to use the L2. This is an L2 Ultra Maximizer, okay, guys? This is a limiter by Waves. As you can see, we're pretty much, we used all Waves plugins right now, guys, okay? The techniques can be applied to any plugins, guys, and we'll go over that more in another video. But we're using the L2 Ultra Maximizer, guys. Now, the main thing that I'm going to want to show you guys right now is where we're going to kind of want to place our ceiling, okay? Okay. Right now, in this case, we want to place our ceiling at negative one. The reason why negative one is because, guys, I'm mastering as if I wanted to put this song up on Spotify. Okay, guys? And, and, and that's where we want to put it. Okay? Spotify actually recommends that we put this at negative one. So that's for kind of streaming services. Uh, I guess you would say base rule because there's a lot of things that go on when it comes to um, the converting. When you put your songs onto streaming services, kind of a... A limiting of their own, actually. Okay, guys? So to play it safe, guys, if you want to get what you're hearing in your system onto Spotify without it 
you know, getting pushed down too much or without it being distorted once it gets to those platforms, guys, negative one is your number, all right? So what we're going to do right now, guys, is pretty much and kind of find your peaks, okay? The reason why we're going to want to find our peaks, guys, is we're going to want to find our peaks on this side so that we're able to push the volume up and kind of push it a little past even getting maybe a little bit of distortion in there just to get some more volume and some more um, loudness leveling, Um so that we're not clipping too much, guys, okay? We're going to be attenuating here. We're looking for maybe one, two, three dBs of, uh, you know, of peak reduction, guys, uh, but nothing too crazy, okay? Negative, all right? Nothing too crazy. So let's get into it, guys. Okay, guys, I'm comfortable with that, okay, guys? There's not too much distortion going on, guys. We're only probably getting about one. I would say you could push it to about negative three, um, you know, peak reduction right here, guys, just to introduce some more distortion. But to play it safe, guys, I'm getting about one on those kicks, those, those kicks that you're hearing, guys. I'm getting about negative one peak reduction right there, uh, dBs of peak reduction. Um, so I'm pretty comfortable right there, guys. So as you can see, guys, we finished our signal flow of our mastering chain. And what I'm going to do now is go through each of these, take them out, and put them back in so you can actually hear what they're actually doing at higher levels. Okay, guys, it'll be a little bit easier to actually hear what they're doing, okay? Let's get into it. The first thing we're going to do, guys, is take out this Kramer tape. Like I said, we wanted to add some harmonic distortion. This adds weight to our track. So let's hear what happens when we take it out and put it back in. Let's get it. All right, guys, like I said, that adds that harmonic distortion, that body to the record to where we get perceived loudness. Let's get into the next thing, SSL compressor, okay, guys? You're going to feel a lot of the weight get lost when we bypass this plugin, guys, and that, that weight kind of adds back and it kind of puts some glue to the record to where it sounds, you know, more together and gelled together, guys. Let's listen to it now. I know you definitely can hear that. Let's get into our EQ, guys. Now, this is going to bring life, and this is also going to bring punch and kind of speed up the record in a way. If you guys can hear what I'm hearing, guys, uh, let me know it in the comments. If you can't, say, hey, Ace man, I don't know about that one. All right, let's get into it, man. Amazing. Breathing life at this point, guys. All right? Let's get into the S1 imager. A little bit, guys. You'll hear a little bit of this with. You know, like I said, guys, you want to achieve most of this in the mixing phase, but let's go ahead and listen to it, all right? Now, what I could hear specifically, guys, when I get rid of this S1 imager, guys, the vocals sound like it's literally coming straight through the middle of the track. And what happens is the vocals kind of go a little bit more to the side, guys. It kind of spreads out just a little bit more and gives us some more width on our track. All right, guys? And of course, you already know what the L2 limiter does, guys. Let's get into it. <laughs> Future. That's how you master your track. Five easy steps. You already know what time it is, man. See you guys in the next video. Dunzos!